from the Norristown Area High School. Jim, a couple comments before the uh, music starts and before we get started with the uh, general announcements. Uh, the Norristown Eagles are coming off a nine-game win streak after opening losses to Lancaster, McCaskey, and Sheltonham, which is the last men's game that I was able to do. Uh, I talked to Coach Mike Evans prior to the game, and he's very, very pleased with the performance of the team. One of the words that sticks out in the interview with Mike is the team chemistry is very good with this team. Illustrated with the Downingtown game, they were down. They managed to pull the game out, and he said the second thing that I think is very striking with this team, it's a non-quit team. When things don't appear to be going that well, the team somehow manages to pull things out. So Coach Evans at this point is really very happy, very excited about where the team is. A nine-game winning streak. Add to that, we have a game tonight against the Upper Marion Vikings, who are currently five and seven. I had the opportunity to, spoke, to speak to uh, Coach Gary Miller prior to the game. He's a rookie head coach in the context that this is his first year at Upper Marion. He did coach previously at North Penn five years as a freshman coach, but he's really a rookie at this level. And he has a pretty talented team. Some players that uh, Jake Parsons, for example, Sean Allworth, Russell DiStefano. He has some veteran players that have played and, and are very familiar with success. And with the team that just lost in the Norristown Triangle Tournament uh, just a week ago, that is Upper Marion by five, they're looking very optimistically towards this game. Assuming that they've made the right adjustments, uh, this is a game that, of course, can go either way. Now, a couple things that probably stick out. Offensively, what is Norristown going to do? The ammo is pretty much going to be the same. They're going to look to push the ball up court. They're going to put an enormous amount of pressure on the players in the backcourt, particularly the guards for Upper Marion. That has been one of their strengths, particularly the play of Willis Gardner and Anthony Carmona. They have been playing outstanding basketball, putting pressure on the guards, and really denying the passing lanes in the full court pressure. In the transition game, again, it's Willis Gardner who sticks out and Carmona. But it has been a five-person team at this point. And I think that's one of the things that Coach Evans is really pleased with. A lot of players are stepping up and being productive offensively. <clears throat> so offensively, you can expect us to push the ball up court. Defensively, expect to score points off of that full-court pressure. And that very intense man-to-man half-court. Sometimes it'll be a 1-2-2. Two, two. As Mike said, it's possible that we'll run and jump out of this, but pressure will be significant. There is a, a huge differential between the offensive points per game and the defensive points given up by Norristown. When an average they're scoring, he said, probably 65 to 68 a game, and they're giving up approximately 45 to 50. So that certainly would account for that uh, nine-game winning streak. Upper Marion, on the other hand, is averaging perhaps about 50 points per game. And as I said, with a 5-7 and seven record, their offensive philosophy is to work somewhat similar, push the ball up court when they can. They have a couple three-point shooters in Russell DiStefano and Corey Iverson. And Sean Allworth can work an inside get outside game, but the key player for them is Jake Parsons, a six foot eight center who's a veteran, one of the top scorers in the area. So for Upper Marion offensively, it's going to be an inside-outside game, keyed by their half-court press and their man-to-man -man defense. They will at times play a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one full court press. That is not their major strength. They don't have the quickness to match up with Norristown for that, but they will look to press and play a half-court man-to-man game. So as we get ready for the starting lineups, this should be a very enjoyable game, a very intense game. It's a local rivalry, and uh, both teams, I think, will look forward to somewhat of bragging rights. Upper Marion losing the first one in the Triangle Tournament would like to redeem themselves. If Norristown is able to win this, that gives them a double bragging right for the year, and of course that would be very important and, and a lot of fun for these kids. So before we start, Thank you. It appears that I will be doing the play-by-play -play as well as the color commentary, so I will do the best I can with it. Looking forward to it, and uh, this should be a lot of fun to see and certainly a lot of fun to do. I'll talk to you shortly. Good evening, everybody. We're going to start with the introductions for Upper Marion High School, Chris McVoy. Sean Aldworth. Sean Aldworth. Number 12, Corey 
Iverson. Number 12, Corey Iverson. Will be starting at the guard Number position. Five, five foot six senior. Russell DeStefano. And Jake Parsons, a six foot eight center. Uh, six foot seven, also a senior. Gary Miller being introduced as the head coach for the Norristown Eagles. Number 15, Jermaine Pierce. Jermaine Pierce, the freshman who's been performing very well in Coach Evans' estimation. Number 31, Julius Blackwell. Julius Blackwell, number 31. Number 20, Carl Dean. Number 20, Carl Dean. Number 10, Anthony Carmona. Number 10, Anthony Carmona. And number four, Willis Gardner. Number four, Willis Gardner. Mike Evans, of course, the head coach in his second season, and we are going to play the national anthem. We'll pause for a moment. Tonight's officials are Joe Anholt, an eight-year veteran, and Billy, I'll just leave it at Bill, it's a very difficult last name, but in any case, two veteran officials. Joe has been doing it for eight years, that is the varsity officiating. Bill has been doing officiating for almost 30 years. So we have two veteran officials for this game as Jake Parsons gets set for the center jump versus Carl Dean. Here we go, people. We're going to re-jump. I'm going to try it again. And the tap is once again controlled by Norristown. Willis brings the ball up and Upper Murrayan will be, it looks like they're in a 3-2 with Russell, Corey, and Chris as the three chasers at the top, and Sean Allworth and Jake Parsons playing the, the box position in the 3-2. Norristown scores off the opening possession, 734 on the Conicelli board, and it's 2-0 Norristown. Russell's bringing the ball up with pressure from Anthony, and they're looking to run and jump early. Mike Evans said that would be part of their plan, and already there's a steal. Corey Iverson turns the ball over, and Willis scores. It's now 4 nothing with 7.15 left in the first quarter. Rebound, steal, but also a turnover on the outlet pass, looking to go the other direction. Russell's handling the ball. There's a back screen at half court by Jake. Ball gets passed into Corey Iverson looking for Parsons underneath, but the ball is almost stolen by Norristown.
Corey Iverson has the ball, is driving baseline. There's a little mismatch there. Tries to give the ball up, and the ball goes out of bounds. It's Norristown ball underneath the basket. Norristown is in a 2-3. Russell inbounds it to Corey Iverson, passes it to Parsons, looking to go inside, has trouble. Passes the ball out to Russell. Another near turnover. Ball gets passed by Corey into Sean Allworth, who scores underneath the scores 4-2. For Murray and back in a 1-2 or 3-2. The chaser, it's more 3-2. The Russell is playing the top on the high post against Jermaine. Norristown swings the ball. Willis takes an NBA three, misses it. The ball is rebounded by Julius Blackwell and scores 6-2 on the Conicelli board. Upper Murray looking to push it up. Russell has it. It's stolen by Carl Dean. Another turnover and it is 8-2. Pomerian has to call a quick timeout, needed. With uh, five minutes and 57 seconds left in the first quarter, it appears that the game plan will be putting a lot of pressure, as Coach Evans indicated in the pregame, put a lot of pressure on the passing lanes. They're gonna run and jump in the backcourt and the full court. look for those quick, easy turnovers, and push the ball up court, score the easy buckets. And, that has been the case so far. Six of the eight points have been off a of transition or off a of steal. Julius Blackwell has one of the four field goals, but that was off of a rebound and a miss. So Norristown is off to a good start. Upper Murrayan is struggling handling the ball, getting the ball up court, and getting good shot selection. Norristown with its full court pressure, forces another turnover. Anthony Carmona takes a shot, misses it, and Sean Oworth rebounds. Corey Iverson has the ball and almost turns it over. They're going to look to double team all the time on the guards, particularly the size of those guards. Corey Iverson with a jumper, not much rotation on the ball. And uh, Willis is pushing the ball up court, beats all the defenders, takes it in and scores the basket. It is now 10 to 2 on the Conicelli board with 522. Another Turnover coming up. Pressure is really bothering them. Ah, a little heavy pass here, and Norristown turns the ball over. They're going to double it in the backcourt. Anthony and Willis putting the pressure on. Carl comes up. Sean passes it to Russell, who passes it to Chris McAvoy. Sean has the ball inside, gets a good look and a good shot. It seems to me the only opportunity for Upper Murray and in this, they will not be able to make those turnovers. There's five easy buckets already for Norristown. The possessions are points, and, and points are going to be critical for Upper Murray. They need to control the ball, get good looks, and get good shots out of those looks. Anthony takes the three. Interesting, Upper Murray's pushing it up. Corey Iverson, Ken Motor, takes the shot, and a questionable call on the shot by Corey Iverson. It appeared that Willis fouled him, but uh, more importantly, I guess it looked like the cylinder blocked the shot because Corey was underneath the basket. Didn't have a real good look, but it's, excuse me, it's obvious that Corey Iverson is very quick, really moves the ball up and down the court. Corey's at the line shooting two. That is the first foul in the game, and we are at the 434 mark on the Conicelli board. now 10-6. Norristown, Willis bring the ball up court. Upper Murray and is still in its 3-2 with Sean and Jake underneath. Russell, Chris, and Corey as the three chasers take, trying to take away Norristown's perimeter game. Norristown's moving the ball around looking to get into Jermaine or get that corner shot just as the case here with Carl Dean. Misses it. And looks like Upper Marion's going to push it up. They did have Jake down momentarily, but weren't able to hit it to him. A lot of pressure again by Norristown. 
Sean Allworth looks to take the shot, has it blocked, and took a long time on a delivery and commits the foul, a frustration foul out of that. You could, it just took a long time for that shot to develop and you could see that, that was going to happen. Willis and Anthony and Carl Dean and Julius Blackwell and Jermaine are the starting five again. No substitutions for either team at the 340 mark on the Conicelli board. Julius Blackwell motioning to his teammates. They're, again, they're going against the 3-2. Very patient, deliberate. Anthony takes the shot, misses it. Uh, outlets. Corey looks to take it down. Doesn't take the shot. Tries to make the pass and it's kicked. One of the advantages of the 3-2 for Upper Murrayan is if they're able to rebound, they have three players out in the lanes that can run the court. It looks like they're trying to do that. But it also means that they have to count on Parsons and Allworth to do the rebounding. Shot is missed. Carl Dean takes the long shot. It is missed. Sean Allworth rebounds it after a couple exchanges. Possible score here if he gives it up. Okay. Passes it back out. Almost turnover. A lot of pressure again. Jake is underneath. The shot is blocked again. It doesn't look like he's getting up. A very quick score. If I'm accurate in this, and I think that I am, all of Norristown's points, all six field goals have been off the board. That is, they've scored either off a missed shot or off of the transition. They have not made an outside shot. They hold a 12-6 lead at the 2.53 mark of the first quarter. Well played game so far, three fouls. Norristown has won, Upper Marion has committed two. The shot is missed, Upper Marion has the rebound. Russell is bringing the ball up. Again, Upper Marion is facing that pressure. The ball is passed into Parsons. There's a foul committed by Jermaine Pierce, and that would be the second team foul for Norristown. Four team fouls. Two minutes and 44 seconds left on the Conicelli board. The score is Norristown 12, Upper Murray and 6. Ball is inbounded to Corey, who looks to Russell, passes it back out. Penetration, kicked out to number 10, takes a shot, missed, and it, ooh, sustained, sustained. The ball gets turned over. It is Norristown ball. Number 10 for Upper Marion is the first substitution. That is Jack Forth. He is, Coach Miller indicated, a good solid player, um, a three-point shooter, and uh, does come up with the basketball right now. Passes the ball to Russell, looking for the transition. It's not there. Number 10 takes the look, passes the ball. It is bad pass. Willis makes a nice play, saves it, passes it to Julius. Takes the short jumper, misses it. Ball's going to go to Upper Marion on the miss shot. Jermaine misses the rebound. We have another substitution for Upper Marion. Number 21 is coming in replacing Corey Iverson. And number 21 is Jack Forth. Okay, so we have Jack Forth and Kevin Burke. Now I'm correcting on that. Jack Forth and Kevin Burke are the two substitutions. Sean takes a good shot in close, good rotation, scores now 12-8 with a minute and 40 seconds left on the Conicelli board. Another substitution for Norristown. Shot is taken, it's missed. One of the things Norristown is going to have to address is that it's one and done. Um, so far, they have not been able to get many second shots. The one they did, they scored from. Here is Steve Evans in. The first substitution for Norristown. Makes a steal, pushes the ball up court. Willis Gardner gets his third field goal. It is now 14-8 with one minute left in the first quarter. Here's the trap coming up. There's a look underneath. Good look, good vision, but they don't control the ball. And there's a foul committed by Russell DeStefano. That is Upper Murray's third team foul.
another substitution for Norristown. And Phil Ash, number 50, has come in. So we have Jermaine, Phil Ash, Anthony Carmona, Willis Gardner, and Steve Evans as the, the five that's on the court. Upper Marion also has two changes. There's a shot, there's a foul. Jermaine will be going to the line shooting too. The official could probably make flip a coin on that foul because it looked like he got fouled from the front and back. But number 21 is charged with the foul. And number 21 for Upper Marion is Jack Forth. The lineup for Upper Marion is Sean Allworth. Jack Parsons in the game right now. Russell DeStefano is in. Kevin Burke is in at number 10. And uh, Jack Forth, number 21. That's your five with 39 seconds left. And the score is 15 to eight Upper Marion. A lot of pressure again on. So far, Parsons has not been a threat. There's a long three, a rebound by Parsons, a score. It's 15 to 10 with 25 seconds left in the first quarter. It looks like Willis is going to pull it back. They're going to take the last shot with 14 seconds and change, moving the ball around. Steve has it, is looking to Willis, who's going to pass, I would think. He's going to penetrate takes the shot, misses it, the ball is rebounded, it's kicked back out to Steve Evans, takes the shot, misses the, butter, the buzzer beater. Here's what we have, people, at the start of the second quarter, Norristown holds a 15 to 10 lead. It has been a well played first, first quarter. Uh, both teams have two fouls, nobody has more than one, so it's been a, a very solid, clean first quarter. Upper Murray and has struggled early with the pressure. It's led to easy baskets. Norristown has been able to make those steals or turnover success stories. Norristown has not been able to score from the perimeter. Uh, their outside shots have missed, and Upper Murray and has been able to control that missed shot and trend to push the ball up court in their transition game. But Norristown has done a much better job defensively and as we get set to start the second quarter, it looks like this is a game that Norristown could control if it stays out of foul trouble, continues to pressure those passing lanes. The guards do not seem to be strong enough to beat the pressure that Norristown can put on them. It is Upper Marine basketball. We have another substitution. We have Brandon Avcito in for them so we have three different players in at this point for upper murray and it's obvious that he's not afraid to use a different lineup so it's eight players nine players that have already seen action for upper murray and the same lineup that finished the first quarter is on the court for norristown Willis is on, Anthony's on, Jermaine is on, Steve is on, and Phil Ash, I believe, is on. That's correct. There's your five as we go into the second quarter. Scores 15-11. Steve pushes the ball up, looks for Anthony, punches it back out to Steve. Willis, almost turnover, good hands. Upper Marion is still putting that pressure on the perimeter. There's a rebound by Sean Allworth. They're looking to run. Number 21 passes it to Parsons, who gets a lot of pressure. Doesn't give it back out. There's a foul, and Upper Marion will inbound the ball underneath the basket. Kevin Burke has the ball, passes it to Jake on the wing. Brandon passes it back out. It's a turnover. Yes, it is. Willis read it perfectly, used his quickness and his long arms to take it, stole it, and although he missed a shot, he will be going to the line shooting two. That also is the first person, number 21 for them, Jack Forth, that's the first person on either team to have more than one fail. And he may be coming out of the game. We'll see. There is a substitution here. Number 22 is coming in. That's Chris McAvoy coming back in. And he's replacing uh, Jack Forth, who has two fouls. Upper Marine has three at this point, and so does Norris. And that is three team fouls. 
Willis makes both shots at a 17-11 on the Conicelli board. Almost a backcourt if it wasn't. I lost sight of it for a second. There's a foul and the shot was. Officials missed it. Upper Merriam will inbound the ball. The foul was on number 50, Phil Ash. <clears throat> no individual or team foul problems for either team at this point. Ball gets passed to the corner. Back to Parsons, takes a shot, misses it. Rebound by Jermaine. Willis looking to push the ball up. The numbers aren't there. <clears throat> Handles it. Again, up for Murray, and then it's 1-2 or 3-2. A little more pressure by number 20. That's Brandon out there. What it does give, though, is a good look up top for Jermaine. He misses the shot. Murray's looking to push it. Not a good play by Brandon. Gives the ball up. And Phil skies, literally skies up, lays it in. And it is now 19-11 on that board. The MO seems to be, again, Put the pressure on the passing lanes. Sean takes a quick shot, misses it. Jermaine rebounds it. The ball's in Willis's hands, passes it to Phil, uses the backboard, and beats Parsons. Upper Marion looks like, at this point, a little sleepwalking. I don't see anybody on the Upper Marion team <clears throat> that is showing either energy or enthusiasm or intensity. It's like they're going up and down the court, kind of matter of factly but I don't see that that intensity. Uh, you just give up a couple easy buckets, you're down by four or five, you give up a quick four or five, and, and I don't see anybody saying, let's do this or let's step up on this. On the other side of it, Willis has keyed their brakes. They have shrunk the passing lanes. Upper Marion is getting one and done, and Norristown is pushing ball up court. And on a plot, really strong side, uh, Phil Ash has contributed four points, two quick baskets. Steve Evans has done a nice job bringing the ball up court, no turnovers. And Norristown has been able to play five or six different players. Partially blocked shot, it is rebounded by Upper Murrayan. Kick back out, good decision. Norristown's pressure is intense. Sean is going to push it, there's a traveling call. Could have taken a shot straight up. He didn't and tried to move inside. Didn't give himself a better angle. The 535 mark on the Conicelli board. It is 21 Norristown, Upper Murray and 11. We have another substitution for Norristown, number 55, just comes into the game. That is Billy Lucas. And Norristown is attacking the 1 2 or 3 2, putting it in a 2 1 2 set. Jake gets the shot underneath, and so far it has worked successfully for Norristown. We have two players coming back into the game for Upper Marion. Corey Iverson is going to come in, and it appears Russell DeStefano will be back on the court. Jake takes the first and makes it. It is 21-12. Brandon is out and Chris McAvoy is out. Russell DeStefano and Corey Iverson are back in the game for Upper Murrayan. Number 10 is correct. That number 10 is out. Chris McAvoy is going to stay on. So Kevin Burke is out. A little bit different, a very different lineup as a matter of fact for Norristown than what started um, 11 minutes ago. Willis is still in, Anthony's in, but that's it. We have three other players that are in for Norristown that are doing the job. There's the trap, a lot of pressure again, almost turnover, and it's forcing Jake to come out much further than they'd like to get the ball. More pressure in those passing lanes, they're doubling the ball, Russell drives, takes a shot, misses it, Sean rebounds, misses it again, Jake misses, we had four shots in close. Upper Murray couldn't finish. Important opportunity. Willis drives and makes it. Nobody steps in front. Not good help side here. Corey with the hesitation. Takes the shot and is fouled. Whoa. 
Corey off the dribble, takes the three-point shot, makes it potential four-point play here. It's 23 to 16. That is five 16 fouls for Norristown. And the foul is on number 55. I believe it was no, it was number two that committed the foul. Makes the shot, so it is a 23-17 game. Norristown has 16 fouls, Upper Murray and four. That foul was on Steve Evans on the three-point shooter. Pass back up top, nice look inside of Julius. Cut, blocked shot by Jake. Sean with the deflection. Upper Murrayan has an opportunity here to cut the lead. It's 23, almost kisses it in off the board. Willis is gonna push it. Sean is late in the transition, pushes it up, and Willis misses the shot. Phil rebounds, uh, correct that. Julius rebounds and is fouled. That will be the fifth team foul for Upper Murrayan. That was on number 22. It's Chris McAvoy on the foul. Julius Blackwell was on the line shooting two. He makes the first one. It is currently 24-17 on the Conicelli board. We have a substitution. Anthony is, well, the lineup is Willis, Julius, Jermaine, Phil, and Anthony. There's the five that's on the court. Steve just came out and is talking to coach. So he goes over to the bench and gets some advice as to what transpired, I guess, on that foul on the three-point shooter a couple moments ago. Number 22 handles it. That would be Chris makes the pass, almost turnover. Upper Marion has to do a better job. The point guards have to do a better job, either the penetration or getting disposing the ball before the trap develops. Once the trap develops, it's really difficult. There's a walk, I thought, by him, by Parsons. Shot is missed by Sean underneath and does not hustle down the court. Number five picks up the foul because Sean did not hustle, missed the shot, and literally walked. Foul to number five. That, of course, would be a player coach issue. A player cannot, off the missed shot or turnover, walk down the court. You have to hustle. You make the mistake, you turn it over, change it. Both ends of the court have to be played in this game. Anthony with the three makes it an important bucket at this point. 28 to 17 at the three minute mark on the Conicelli board. There's a drive, a penetration, and a score. Should not happen. He went half court and looks like Willis is going to return the favor. Does, penetrates, dishes it off to Phil. That quick, two quick buckets. Neither team played defense or got back on that. There's the trap again. Ball gets passed to the corner. Back out to Sean. Takes the shot, misses it. Jake with the rebound up and over everybody. Is fouled. That will be the seventh team foul. For the remaining two minutes and 40 seconds, Upper Murray will be in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Jake is at the line. The foul was on Jermaine Pierce. That's his second. He's still in the game. That is, I believe he's the only player for Norristown that has two. Jake takes the shot and makes it. It is 30 to 22 on the Conicelli board. At the 238 mark, Upper Marion is in a bonus situation for the remainder of the quarter. We have Willis at the top taking a long three, misses it, a near rebound by Carl Dean. Okay, a spin move. Okay, pushing the ball up court, a good lead, but turns it over. Norristown may score, should score at the other end. Shot is missed. Willis is there to rebound. Not a real good play on Upper Marion's part. Corey handling the pressure, gets it over. Russell makes the penetration, makes a nice pass to number 32. Passes it back out to Corey, takes the deep shot, misses it. This is going to be off to the races again. 4-1 on the transition. Willis makes a nice no-look pass that quick. It balloons, the lead balloons to 32 
34-22 at a minute 41 on the Conicelli board. Corey passes it to Russell in the corner, reverses it up top to number 32, takes the shot. Those long threes, if they're in, it's great. If they miss, they're quick transitions, and up, Upper Marion is not getting back on defense. Willis once again penetrates and takes the score. Willis is signaling the coach he needs to come out. Um, stomach or something's bothering him. Steve Evans is getting ready to come back in. Cross court pass for number 32. That's Matt Rafferty. This is a back out to Chris, to Russell in the corner. Chris looks the fake, gives up the dribble. Russ takes a deep shot. It's good. Picks up the three out of it. 50 seconds left. Norristown has the ball. It's 46 seconds. It appears that they're going to play it, look for the last shot. We'll see on that. Ball gets punched in to the top. Almost turnover. Willis penetrates, dishes it off. There's a block. There's a follow-up by Julius Blackwell. Blackwell. Norristown did not play for the last shot. They did score out of its 38-25. Both teams are in a bonus. Pass to Jake, takes the short shot, makes it. Uh, still, and that's two possessions in the last 14 seconds. There's 12 seconds left. Norristown has the ball. They will play for the last shot. Russell was out trying, but not much in terms of hands shrinking the lanes. There's a turnover. Uh, almost turnover. There's a kick here. There's 1.2 seconds left on the clock. Steve Evans is coming in for Willis, who's hurting. Uh, stomach seems to be hurting. See what Norristown does on this. Upper Marion's going to look to put man pressure on. They have to force the ball to the side. There's a shot, and it's almost there's almost a foul out of that, people. Almost a foul. A long shot by Julius Blackwell. Here's what we have at halftime. Conicelli board reads, Norristown holds a 38 to 27 lead. The difference in this game has been the transition and the steals and the turnovers. The transition game for Norristown has led to easy buckets. Willis Gardner has led the pack with easy buckets, pushing the ball up court, converting the steals either directly to layups or dishing it off. Upper Marion has not done a real good job handling the basketball and their shot selection has been hurried as a result of that pressure. Norristown is putting all their pressure at the top which has allowed Upper Marion to get the baseline players some good looks but they haven't been, a been able to make them. Uh, and the second issue for Upper Marion is that when they take the deep shots they are looking to take threes when they're missed, Norristown is off to the races. There's been several breaks where it's been a 3-1, 4-1, and Upper Marion has not been able to stop that transition. Upper Marion will certainly have to make several adjustments at halftime if they want to get back in it. Norristown has to be very pleased. Nobody in foul trouble. Uh, they're doing exactly what they want with the pressure. They're pushing the ball up court. And a lot of players have figured in the balance scoring for Norristown. So it's been a very good first half for Norristown. Uh, probably a very disappointing first half for Upper Marion, but things that are certainly correctable in the second half. We'll pause and uh, we'll pick up things, I would think, in approximately eight or ten minutes. There's nine minutes left on the clock, so we'll pick up on it in ten minutes. Okay, see you in a couple minutes. We're back. It's Norristown ball. It's 38 to 27. If you're just picking up on it, uh, in a couple moments, I'll get you caught up with the lineup. Anthony Carmona is in. Carl Dean is in. Jermaine is in. Julius Blackwell is in. And Ken Witter is in. First time in the game for Norristown. That's also one of the players that Mike Evans featured in the pregame that he was really pleased with. He and Steve Evans, he felt, have come off the bench, done a nice job. Um, and Ken is a sophomore, so that's always a nice shot in the arm. In any case, Norristown misses on the first possession. Upper Murray and has it. I'll get you caught up with their lineup. A little different than the lineup that started the game. Russell is in. Um, Sean is in, Jake is in, number 21 turns the ball over, 
also we have number 21 and number 10 and that is Jack Forth and Kevin Burke who are both in. So their lineup is also different than the lineup that started the game. Upper Marion still in that 1-2-3-2 two, two, trying to take away the, the shooting lanes at the top. The ball gets passed to the corner back up top to Anthony who penetrates. The shot is blocked by Sean. It remains Norristown ball underneath the basket. Ball is inbounded, passed back out to Julius at the top, or returns it to Anthony, takes a long three, almost rebounded. It is by Carl, went way up in the air to pull that down, give Norristown another possession. Norristown continues to struggle in the perimeter aspect of the game. Anthony off the dribble, takes the shot, and makes it. It's a two. It is now 40 to 27 on the Conicelli board, and Norristown is person to person. Ball gets passed to Russell in the corner, goes baseline, goes through the baseline, tries to get into Jake at top. Instead, it's passed to Sean, who has a good look, flat on the shot, not much rotation. The ball is turned over by Norristown. Jake comes up with the ball. Passed into Kevin Burke in the corner. We have a foul underneath the basket. That is the first foul in the third quarter with the score 40 to 27. The Eagles over the Vikings on the Conicelli board. That is the third foul though. That is the first player that has reached that number of fouls on either team. Number 15, Jermaine has three. I would imagine we'll see a substitution fairly soon on that. Ball gets moved around the court from Kevin to Jack to Jake. And there's the short jump shot. It is now 40 to 29. Upper Marion still in its 3-2, taking away. Norristown attacking with a 2-1-2. Anthony takes the shot. And that, that's the second consecutive field goal for Anthony. That's a three. If Norristown is able to start making those shots, Upper Marion will be even more trouble. Now, Sean gets the layup out of it. Not too happy. I guess he thought he was fouled. Makes the transition. Norristown's pushing it up. Anthony again passes it to Carl in the corner. Gets a good look. Takes the shot and makes it. It's a three. The disadvantage of the 3-2 is that the corners are open. You really have to hustle to get to that corner when you have three players at the top. Upper Marion comes back with a quick three. Jack Forth with a quick three. It's 46-34. Looks like both teams are putting some points on the board the last couple minutes with a perimeter game. Norristown has not scored off the transition as we're in the second half. There's a backdoor cut, a nice play. Carl Dean uses a reverse layup, uses the cylinder as a protector, so Parsons can't block the shot. Upper Marion is facing Norristown. Man, there's a pass underneath to Sean. Sean was underneath the basket. Not a good spot for him to get it, and it's an almost turnover. It's 48-34, 4.06 mark on the Conicelli board. Norristown holding a 14-point lead. Russell's inbounding the ball, passes it to Jake, who fakes it, passes it back out to Jack. Russell takes a long three, misses it. Jermaine takes the rebound, is looking to Anthony. Anthony is pushing it up. Handling the basketball with Carl. And to Julius Blackwell, back out to Anthony at the top. Another shot, this one's off the mark considerably. Upper Marion rebounds it. Good look here by Russell. Feeds it into Jake who gets a quick release, misses the shot, it's one and done. Julius with the rebound, a bad pass in the backcourt, an almost turnover. Jack Forth almost steals it. Kind of token defense here. Parsons, not a real good defensive effort. 
and here we have Norristown sleeping on this one. A missed shot, Jake rebounds, follows it. Surprising that he's using that right hand on the left-hand side of the court for that right-handed layup. Instead of using the right hand to protect the ball and the shot makes it, but nobody there to contest that shot either. Upper Marine coming out a little bit further. There's Jermaine with a feed from the top, makes the move, attacks the basket, will go to the line shooting two. There will be a couple substitutions after this shot. Jermaine misses the first. Willis is back out on the court. I said at the end of the half, the first half, Willis seemed to be ailing a little bit. I don't know if there was a stamina or a stomach issue, but he is back out on the court. He missed the entire six minutes almost of the uh, third quarter. So we have Anthony, Julius, Quarrel, Jermaine, and Willis on the court for Norristown. Corey Iverson getting a lot of pressure in the backcourt with Russ, with Chris. Jake underneath the basket, misses the ball, and Sean. So the lineups are identical. I think I'm correct on that too. The lineups have started the game. Willis handling the ball with some pressure with Chris McAvoy in the front and backcourt. Willis hands the ball. There's a backdoor cut by Carl. Julius turns, Willis has it, penetrates, pulls it back out, passes it to Jermaine who makes a good in and out move, takes a shot, pressured, contested, rebound. Sean fouls on the shot, picks up the foul, and Julius Blackwell makes the shot. There is a timeout. It will be an Upper Murray and timeout with Julius Blackwell going to the line. At the 2.03 mark, Norristown holds a commanding lead. The Conicelli board reads Norristown 53, Upper Murray in 36. The game has, quite frankly, flowed pretty quickly. There are only three fouls in the six minutes that we've played in the third quarter. Uh, neither team is, is putting the other team on the foul line. So it has been very quick, a very fast-paced game. We'll pause for a minute and I can give you some halftime stats and, and certainly a key difference for Norristown. Norristown scored 22 points in transition tonight. 18 of those 22 points, you've got to grab this, 18 of the 22 points that Norristown scored in the first half were off of steals or turnovers. Norristown shot 16 for 37, a, a good shooting percentage, but keep in mind the bulk of those shots, 11 of those field goals were layups. That percentage would change dramatically if you took away the layups. Upper Marion, on the other hand, shot 33%, 9 for 27 from the field in the first half, and had 12 turnovers to Norristown's three. The number of rebounds for both teams was the same, almost the same, 21 to 20. The difference in this game is turnovers, points off the turnovers. Here we have Upper Marion again in a bad position, almost turnover. Ball gets passed to Russell back in the corner, makes a good fake, takes the shot, misses it. Chris McAvoy rebounds it, takes the shot, makes it. It is 53 to 38. 15 point spread with a minute 29 left in this third quarter. Willis motioning as to what he wants. A strong lineup on the court. Julius takes a shot, misses it. Carl rebounds. Julius Blackwell rebounds it, follows it. Corey Iverson looking to push the ball up court. Does. Dribbles into the trap, passes to five. That is Russell, takes the three. Here we go again. You're going to take those shots. The downside is you missed the shot. There's potential for a long rebound and transition. <clears throat> Parsons rebounds it, passes it to Corey Iverson looking to push it up. It does not have the numbers. Pulls it back out, passes it to Russell at the top. Norristown is playing 
person to person. Chris McAvoy handles the ball up top, getting doubled, passes it. Sean is going to get a good look, does, makes the shot, did not use the board, got away with it. The cylinder almost took that away from him. Norristown has the ball, passes it with 22 seconds left in the third quarter, losing that time passed into Jermaine, reverse layup, makes the shot, a sweet play to Maine's part. Upper Marion will try and get the last shot with five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. Sean is going to get it. No, passes it to Corey, gets the shot. Had enough time, quite frankly. I don't think he realized he had enough time to get a better shot than that. And I'm not talking about distance. I'm talking about grip on the ball. He didn't have a good grip because he was worried about the clock. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, we have a slight pause here. The score is 57 Norristown. 40 Upper Murray. A big difference from the game that was played in the tournament where Upper Murray lost by five points. This has been a Norristown dominated three quarters. The difference again has been the steals, the conversion of those steals into easy buckets, great shooting percentage, a very good floor game for Norristown. Defensively, they have been able to shrink the passing lanes. They're doubling sometimes tripling the ball, two players on the ball, and a third player cutting off that passing lane. And Upper Marion has not been able to take advantage of the two baseline players who have been able to get a couple looks but have not been able to make it. The way you have to successfully attack that kind of pressure is get the ball to the corners. The corners have to feed it either to the post where they're going to get one-on-one -on -one matchup or take that baseline corner jumper. And Norristown has not been able to do that. When they have taken the shots, they just haven't been able to convert them. Here we go to start the fourth quarter. It will be Upper Marion's ball. Phil Lash has entered the game. Chris McAvoy is looking to inbounds the ball and does to Brandon, who does turn it over. You don't like to see that. You're in the game a couple seconds and turn the ball over. A different lineup again for Upper Marion. I'll get you caught up with that in a moment. Julius takes the shot, misses it. Sean rebounds. Corey Iverson has it, pushing the ball up. It's not there. Doesn't penetrate off of it. Russell looks underneath to Sean, who's going to get a good look. Makes the shot, converts it. 57-42, and Norristown's going to come back. Oh, there is a foul and a push here, and was not called. Jake picked up the ball and literally pushed pushed Julius Blackwell out of the way. At the 7-18 mark, fourth quarter, both teams have two team fouls. It looks like we have, we do, we have a short timeout for Norristown with Norristown possession and a 15 point Upper Murray possession with a 15 point spread. And we'll pause for the 50 50 drawing. And I need a couple moments to catch my breath and uh, get caught up with this. I can give you a couple more stats. In the first half, Upper Murray and Parsons had nine points, eight rebounds, Iverson seven points, all were six points and five rebounds. Willis was the leading scorer for Norristown, shooting six for 10 from the floor at 14 points, five assists and four boards. Julius had six points and four, ribbies, four rebounds. And Pierce had seven rebounds. Eight one two seven. Number seven seven eight one two seven. And the winning number for the fifty fifty draw seven seven eight two oh six. Seven seven eight two oh six. It will be Upper Murray in basketball. Here we 
we go. Brandon, Corey, Chris, Sean, and Jake are the five on the court for the Vikings. Phil Ash, Anthony, Steve, correct that, Ken, number five for the Eagles, along with Carl Dean and Willis. Corey with a long three in and out. That has been pretty much the story tonight when they've taken those. Now that's very smart defensive play on the part of Chris McAvoy. Willis did not, as they say, turn, look, and go. Took the ball and looked immediately go down the court. Smart defensive posture on the part of Upper Marion's guard. Willis turns the ball over. Chris is handling the ball with Anthony pressuring at the top. Corey has to come out deep to take the ball. Handles it, looking to handle it to does give it to Sean. Upper Murrayan is getting a lot more pressure at the top now. Brandon gives up the dribble, passes it to Jake, gives it to Sean, <clears throat> looks to shoot, looks to drive, takes the shot, misses it, it's blocked, and that's the hustle down the court. Willis has the basketball. Coach looks to Coach Evans, signals what he wants. We have a turnover. Phil gets the ball from Willis at the top in the paint area and looks to go to the basket, turns it over. We have Norristown putting the pressure on person to person again. They're going to look to double. Yes, they are going to double. Coach Evans signaled a change defensively. Ball gets turned over by Corey. An attempted pass to Sean. Rebound. Nice pass. Nice play here. Just a nice play. Three more Upper Marion players there to take that shot. It's passed underneath. Very team-oriented play here. Um, very smart offensive play. Jake takes the shot, misses it. Norristown is going to, well, a little bit of a push off here, but we get away with it. Phil gets the ball up top, passes it to Willis, who's going to take the short shot, does, misses it. Anthony rebounds, takes the shot, misses it, and Phil Ash is there to rebound. Great job on the boards by Phil Ash with three Upper Marion players underneath the basket. They're still unable to come up with the rebound. Good look here. Chris has it, attempts to pass it. There's a jump ball. Two Norristown players are right on the ball. Ken and Carl are right there. It will be... <laughs> we have a momentary pause. Um, one of the spectators ran out on the court. It is Norristown ball. That's good. A little bit of levity. Fans liked it. A little bit of levity. Upper Marion pressing full court. First time tonight they've done that. Coach indicated that's not something I like to do. Um, but they're doing it. They almost get a turnover out of it. Shot by Anthony. Misses it. Jake with the rebound. It's a 61 to 42 game at the 445 mark on the Conicelli board. Russell gets a good look, misses the shot. Jake tips it, controls it. He should not have put the ball on the floor. Shot's blocked, he should have gone up. We have a foul here by Russell on Willis. Nice to see Russell attempts to help Willis up. Upper Marion is walking down the court. There's, the heads are down. The, I said it to you earlier, the enthusiasm and energy on the part of Upper Marion does not seem to be there. There's no catalyst, either offensively or defensively, to spark plug this team emotionally. I think for the Eagles, you see that with Willis, and although not verbally, you see it uh, defensively and probably with Anthony as well. And I do believe that that's a very important ingredient for any team. Someone who steps up and emotionally, physically, verbally galvanizes the team to keep pushing it and move to another level. Carl does travel. He moved the foot. With four minutes, 11 seconds left in the fourth quarter, Upper Marion has the ball in the backcourt, passes it to Chris. Norristown is going to pick up and probably look to double. 
Chris makes the penetration, passes it out to Russell, feeds the ball into Jake, again takes that shot below the box, gets the shot, gets away with it. Upper Murray is pressuring, but there's going to be an easy bucket here. Whoops, whoop, we have a whistle first, a foul on the push. And that, I, I, quite frankly, I didn't see the foul. I was looking to the pass and the person underneath. But I'm getting the feeling it was the same type of foul that, that Jake had committed earlier and was not seen. It looks like we have. Intentional foul? You called it intentional foul. Yeah, played when it was intentional. Right? Yep. Foul number four. Yep. That was missed earlier on a loose ball possession, I felt, when Julius Blackwell turned the ball and in order to clear space, he pushed him out of the way. So this time it was caught. Anthony goes to the line, makes the first. Jake is questioning the call with the official. Okay, Upper Marion. I'm just trying to find out. I'm looking for the official signal. We do have flagrant foul. Number four with it. He's questioning the official on it. In any case, it is 63-44. He stays in the game and Norristown sustains possession. Passes it out to Carl. Passes it to Willis. Makes the penetration. Passes it to Phil. Gets up. Rebounds. Misses it. And Russell has the ball, is looking, he does see Chris, passes to Jake underneath, makes the shot again, same thing though. He's able to get away with that. Willis with a little stutter step, forces his player to fall down. Number 22 falls to the floor. Willis laughs at it, and Chris I think smiled, although I'm not certain that was the case. That is Chris McAvoy. We have 21 back in the game for then that is Jack Froth. Russell's still in, Sean's in. Underneath, good look, okay. 63 to 48 at the 304 mark, fourth quarter, Conicelli board. We're under three. Will is handling the basketball. There's no rush at this point. 15 point spread. Slightly different line of penetration. Again, a team effort on the part of Norristown. It's very noticeable, and Mike had it right in the pregame when he said the team chemistry is very different. Um, Ken Witter passed that ball off to uh, Phil Ash a couple moments ago. Both of them had good looks, but there was a better look and a score there. And that, that is just awesome to see. That's the kind of thing that can propel a team that's, that may be average or good to the next level. The average team can be good, the good team can be better if you have that team chemistry and that team unselfishness. If players are looking at stats, if they're looking at points, invariably becomes a cancer. It, it is nice to see that we're looking at assists and rebounds and not points, and that will carry this team very successfully as this year continues to unfold. <laughs> as I catch my breath. We have seven fouls committed in this half. Four by Upper Murray and three by Norristown. Jake misses the shot. It is 65 to 50 on the Conicelli board. Norristown is well on its way to winning its 10th straight. Has played a very positive, very good game, both ends of the court, defensively and offensively. We have a pause here. We have a sub. No, we do have a substitution. We have an injury. Jake with an elbow injury that's been addressed by the trainer, but he's out. Number 10 will be his replacement. That is Kevin Burke. A much smaller lineup for Upper Marion. That means Sean Allworth will be responsible for, for dealing with the paint, protecting it. All right, he's back on the court. That is Jake is back on the court. And that quickly, Kevin Burke goes to the bench. 
So we have Jack and Chris in the backcourt for Upper Murrian, along with Russell, Sean, and Jake. Penetration, an attempted dish off, it's a turnover, we're off to the races. Joyce is going to score out of it, he does. Good assist here by Carl. Again, that, that team unselfishness, pressure in the backcourt, looking to trap. Chris takes the jump pass, Sean has a good look, but bobbles the ball and probably hurt his scoring opportunity. Shot an air ball out of it because he bobbled it, although there was no pressure on that shot. Just missed everything. Upper Marion's gonna pressure the ball in the backcourt. Steve is back on, when I say Steve, that's Steve Evans, number two. Okay, working against Jack. There's a little double team pressure, Sean coming out the pressure. Jake is handling it underneath. Julius is going to make the penetration, dishes it off. A good reverse layup on the part of Jermaine. Again, able to use the cylinder as a protector to take that shot. Jake is going to get the ball in a deep corner. He's going to pass it to Sean underneath and makes the shot. It's 69 to 53. If the game were over, there's 57.9 seconds left. If the game were over, Norristown would be exactly what they have been scoring offensively, which coach said is probably 68 to 69, so they're right at that mark. Coincidentally, defensively, Coach Evans indicated in the pregame that they're giving up 45 to 50 per game, so uh, they are a little bit over that at three points with 57.9. Um, it will be Norristown on defense as we pick up the last less than a minute. A fun game to do, people. Um, a very good game for Norristown as the in ball underneath the basket. Wholesale substitutions on the part of Upper Murrian. Several new faces. Upper Murray and puts token pressure on as Corey comes out, Sean comes out, Jake comes out. Norristown has made some changes. Tom is in, Matt's in. Mike Buckley is in for Norristown. Tom Ponitowicz is in, number 44 for Norristown. David Wrigley is in, makes the shot, makes a three-point play. Steve. Evans is in for Norristown. Mike Buckley and Murray will be to the line with 45.3 seconds left, a 72 to 56 score. Matt Turry, Steve Evans, Dave Wrigley, Tom, and Mike Buckley are the five that are on the court for Norristown. Upper Murray and scores at 72 to 58. Stevens getting full court pressures. The pass is the back. It returned to Steve, who does turn it over. There's a travel violation there. So it will be Upper Murray and basketball with 26.6 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Chris is going to inbound it off to the side. Passes it to number 41, which is Rob Scott. Offensive foul. Fans didn't like the call. In any case, it is Norristown ball with Tom, Steve, and Matt in the backcourt. Dave. And Mike. Here we go. It looks like Chris will score it. He does. 
It's 72 to 60. A couple sloppy plays to finish the game. Looks like we're going to get a layup here, a missed opportunity, another missed opportunity. It will be Norristown ball with 2.6 seconds left on the clock. We have two missed shots here. Mike missed it and Dave both missed shots. Steve inbounds the ball to Matt. He's going to take the shot and almost makes it in and out. People, here's what we have. Final score on the Conicelli board is 72 the Norristown Eagles. Upper Marion Vikings was 60. By no means was the score that close. Norristown was in control of this game from the opening tap. And Norristown, I think, can attribute to success tonight, which is their 10th consecutive win that puts them at 10 and 2. They can attribute that success, I think, as I pause for a moment, to a couple very important things. The very unselfish play on the part of the team. A lot of good passes, good shot selection, good ball movement. The transition game was excellent on the part of Norristown. Their defense led to that transition. That's an art, and they played very good defense. And they played that defense without committing fouls. They shrunk the passing lanes, forced the turnovers. They hit the boards, looked for the open player, and pushed the ball up court. On Upper Marion's part, obviously, the turnovers hurt, and the nature of those turnovers, backcourt led to easy baskets. Willis Gardner and Anthony were able to convert those early in the game to make it a quick start for Norristown. The inability of Upper Murrayan to shoot well, as I said to you, they shot 9 for 27 in the first half. Uh, I'm sure the stats are very similar in the second half. The inside game, except for Parsons, was not there. The perimeter game for Upper Murrayan was not there because they didn't have the good looks. Upper Murrayan kept pressuring the passing lanes and kept pressuring the shots. So this is a very good win for Norristown. It keeps the winning streak alive but more importantly I think is the way they played the game coach will feel very good about it uh, the team play and just the overall execution of effort tonight I know that I enjoyed doing this game tonight it was a lot of fun it is so important from the commentary standpoint to see a game that is well played to see the execution to see the players having fun with it and see the coaching staff smile after the game. And, and that certainly was the case. I had a great deal of fun in, with this game. And uh, before I sign off, wish everybody a great week. And I uh, hope the weather warms up a little bit, get tired of this stuff. And uh, I'd like to sign off indicating that great win for Norristown. And officials did a great job. Bill and Joe did a great job with it. And. Uh, We'll see you on Friday night. The women play, and I believe Joe Highland will be back, and uh, the two of us will be doing the Norristown Eagles girls game Friday night. Have a great couple days, and see you Friday night.